All right. Well, this morning we have a little special something for you. Um, uh, Haley and Chris have been at uh, the Hammond Bible Camp this past week. Chris has actually been there for two weeks. He was uh, a camp counselor this year for uh, the two grades uh, beneath him, right? Two camps, right? And then he attended his his uh, the senior camp. Uh, he and Haley did. And so they're going to share this morning, if that's all right with you. I knew you all be excited and like that. And so we're going to start with Haley this morning. Good morning. Um, I really like camp this year. Um, uh, I thought it was my last year being able to go. It wasn't. I'm happy about that. Be a counselor next year. Um, uh, so this camp uh, um, it was really fun, um, and it was really inspirational. Um, uh, so uh, the first night we were there, my old theater teacher, Mr. Hanson, he. Um, did this lesson, and he walked up, um, and there were chains around him, and he was talking about how uh, the chains represent the sins in our lives and how it can uh, lead to, to more chains being added if you don't talk about it or uh, just continue sinning. And he had this cross, and um, so he gave us all sticky notes, and so and so he said to write down all of our sins that we want to be taken from us and nail them to the cross. And obviously, nobody's perfect, you know. I mean, I have I have anxiety, and so. So, you know, it was like as soon as I nailed it to the cross, like the weight lifted off my shoulders and I was like, Whoa <laughs> Like that's crazy, man. <laughs> you know, and um it was just uh yeah, there was this there were several girls in my cabin who, you know, had really similar stories. But this one girl, her name's Ashley, I met her while we were riding the bus to camp. Um, she's the first ever Christian in her family. And her story is her about, I think, a year ago, her mom got really, really sick and got cancer. And... Uh, she started praying, and thankfully, her mom's cancer-free now. Um, but, like, she was super devoted. Like, um, she had two Bibles. She had one she got from an auction or a yard sale, and it was, like, and both of them were filled to the brim with, like, notes. Huge. <laughs> and... She had this journal that she would draw verses in and stuff, and she would give them around. Um, I don't have one, um, but I like looked in her journal, and they were like really, really nice. And did you get one? Yeah, Chris got one. Um, but like, and she was just super uplifting and stuff, and she was like so excited for God. Like, she would like get up at like five in the morning to do prayers prayer circle. Um, I told her to wake me up, but we never, like, <laughs> well, I never woke up because uh, that bed I had. I slept on the top bunk because I had no ladders and I fell every single time. <laughs> but, so, and there was this other girl named Kylie and her, all the women in her family have this genetic and 
few weeks ago, he was on FaceTime with her boyfriend because he moved. Really sweet. Um, and he prayed over her because she had chest pain that day. Like, doctors were very sure she had it, that she got the chest pain. And he prayed over her. The next day, she went, and the doctor said she was cancer-free. Yeah. No, I was like, that's so cool because you're like a cool cat. <laughs> and I was like, I like you. <laughs> no, I like everyone at camp. Um, uh, I mean, there were fun times. I wrestled Hanson for almost an hour, and I won. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fun. Um, uh, there were baptisms. Chris got three baptized yesterday. Um, I did a special yesterday morning because a group of girls and I decided we need to show how much God has changed us. So we did this, uh, did two songs, and I, we did Our God and, with a mix of um, this other song. But it was it was really nice. And then we did oceans and like everyone just like sang along and like whenever we did oceans it just felt really, really powerful. And it was very nice experience. And I can't wait for next Chris, your turn. Exodus 3 5 says, Then he said, Do not come near, take your sandals off your feet, for the place you stand is on holy ground. Because God's presence was there on that bush. Because God's presence was there on that bush, Moses was able to be anointed with that. We and the camp can be similar. When God's presence is there, there is more. Oh, that's my voice. Oh, what do you know? Okay. <laughs> so when we have an experience where God is with us, then things can change. We can be the burning bush, and the area around us can be holy and anointed. One example of that is every day we went to the river, and there was a man said about a very little thing telling us to leave. And instead of getting angry, campers decided to make a circle, pray over the situation. As soon as we finished praying, let me be clear, this guy wanted to fight our director. He, he calmed down, and he just turned around and left. And that's what happens when God's presence is there, because people can see the holiness. In it. One parable I like to think of at camp is how we are soldiers in God's army. And camp is sort of a rallying point for us. Halfway through the battle, we might have scars, we might have bruises, but we can sit around a fire, and we can encourage each other that we can go back and be stronger and keep fighting the good fight. Another parable that I was seeing is camp is like a lighthouse something we look forward to, but ultimately is not the only thing. It is something that we use to realign our sights on God, to start new, to begin another expedition in search of God. It isn't anything special by itself unless we keep living the attitude of worship. Being a camp counselor was an amazing experience. I went to inspire campers that I was over, and I ended up being inspired, inspired myself. And the best way to learn is by leading. And that was very fulfilling. I can't believe it when a group of sixth grade boys staying two hours after chapel and praying over leaders and each other, your faith and language the spirit works how you want. Every day they would stay. They'd be like, free to go. And they would stay. There's something special 
about when we take time out of our day, don't stick to our own schedule, spend some, some time with God. I really believe that that generation, this generation, or the ones following us very soon, are going to be the ones that tear down the walls of religion and focus on relationships with God. About a third of the campers at that camp got saved. And many got rededicated and baptized. In the last day of camp, I prayed that God used me the way He wants in the next camp, which is the junior high camp in the middle school. He definitely answered that prayer. One verse I like to focus on going into that camp was Proverbs 3 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. Junior camp, grades 4th and 5th, had an obvious darkness looming over some of the camp. One of the experiences that we had was with a little boy named Trevor who was dropped off without any word. His parents just did that had a very serious mental issue that was incapacitated. He couldn't be alone. We had to walk with him and make sure he was safe in the bathroom. And we could tell that he felt alone. Because how could you not when your parents send you to a camp just to get away? I can tell you that he went home feeling alone. Sweet little boy. We had a thing where we had to schedule rotations so that he wouldn't get attached to one camper so that we could all spend time with him. But I think it was better for us because I was getting attached to him. <laughs> one, more, one situation that was a little more personal to my experience was away in my cabin on the first night. I was crying in the middle of the night. Upsetting. Something fell off. So went to see why he was crying. He said that he felt hurt and unloved. I soon learned that this fourth grader was depressed and suicidal. I can't imagine someone being that age having those thoughts about themselves. He explained that he felt unloved because he'd been hurt before. I asked him to explain that one point, he was being abused. We are going to write a report, and thankfully, there was some enlightenment. We learned that he's out of that situation now, and he can take more action to work on that. But he, it was very clear that he was distant from everyone. He didn't want to play games. He wanted to sit in the cabin, or he just wanted to sit at the table. So he got more and more moved. Eventually he got saved, started playing with the little kids, started playing games, started opening up. The best gift that we could have given him is that he went home and loved the Lord for as well. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purposes. And it certainly did work out for good. Verse that, the lost sense over that week was also Matthew 18, 12. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? Even though they felt in love, God sought them. We were able to facilitate that. At camp, half the camp got saved. Many more got baptized and rededicated. Going into senior camp, I went from becoming a leader to becoming a learner. It was a very humbling experience and was very disappointing because I could no longer sneak into the kitchen and speak. The whole camp itself had an attitude of worship, not only just in chapel, but in everything they did, which is the meaning of worship. For the longest time, I thought worship was standing up here and singing songs, playing music, but you can live in an attitude. You can go about your whole day worshiping if you want to. Yeah. 
devotions that were supposed to be 20 to 30 minutes were about two hours nightly. And well, so where our life out period was supposed to be. And this was on top of two other church services. It was about, say, three hours in the chapel night, the days that they went over within various church services. About an hour in the morning of chapel, and then two hours at night. These kids, all of us, were dedicated to learning more about God. The message that spoke the most to me was about salvation. It really summed it up beautifully. The things that we laid down are such a burden on these people. And we laid them down. I laid mine down. There was some movement there. People were set free. John 8.36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. People at that camp might have experienced freedom for the first time or in a long time. It really is a freeing feeling. You won't know freedom until you put those chains down. Jesus is the light and also the lamp into our path. However, if we don't look, look and stay clear of the obstacles that lay along our path, we're just going to stray further away from God. Often we can see an experience like that and think, oh, there's God, and start running towards him, but we're not looking down, looking for stumbling blocks. That's when you fall into the trouble of picking your chains So that was one of the things I really focused on in my studies and with other people, is that we need to be cautious not to pick our chains back up because it can be comfortable, because it's something we've dealt with for so long, because it was something that was easy to go back to. Psalm 103.12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. He takes our chains, he takes our sins, throws them infinitely far away. We have a hole in our heart designed to fit the love of Christ. However, if we do not fill it with him, we will replace it with other darkness. It is vital to prevent that. Saying becoming a Christian believing often isn't enough. We have to stay in an attitude of worship, prayer, daily. It can't be something that we just go to church. We have to be focusing on God. First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's what it means to be. Last night was an emotional experience of prayer and worship where chains were broken. An experience that touched me when I was a teenager. I don't excuse me. A moving experience to me was when a camper that I didn't even really talk to that much turned around and hugged me. Before I knew it, I was speaking. I had been speaking. God speaking through me. I was there to witness God's voice speaking. My prayers had a revelation. I was sitting at the altar, just praying and worshiping. And my friend goes up to me and he's like, Man, you should be a pastor. And I was like, oh. and Then all of a sudden, I see all these, like, everything lights up. I'm like, Seeing all these parts of the puzzle, that one, <laughs> fitting together, that's when I realized that I was falling. Which really does throw a fork in my plans. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, I have internships lined up. I have college scholarships looking at and stuff like that. Engineering. I remember my last day. Last day, someone's like, "You wanted to go to Rolla for engineering, right?" And I was like. I don't know anymore, man. <laughs> uh, the most meaningful meeting, meeting to me, and this is where my notes are, <laughs> was on the last day where a few of us decided that even though we stayed up talking, we went to bed at 2 o'clock, we were going to wake up at 5 o'clock and do a little exercising. We went for a run. 
about what to do with my friends. What was even better was a little meeting talking about the things that God was doing through our camp and a little worship. I went to chapel. I just brought my speaker, connected it to a computer, and we started playing music and praying. And I think, I believe it was the five of us that were there praying for each other, seeing God. It's unexplainable. It really is. I can't tell you everything that happened because it's above me fully. We laughed, cried, danced very badly. It was amazing. Uh, one of the songs that we were really getting into and just filled us with joy was Hope We Went to the Enemy's Camp, right? That's what the song's called. Sing it, Mom. Yeah, I'll sing it with you. Yeah. I wasn't even going to do this, but I was like, this is really good. I like that. Yep, yep. We love it. We started singing this yesterday, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we know that one. And so uh, here we go. We went to the enemy's camp. And we took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. We went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. 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 Satan is under my feet. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet, 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 Satan is under my feet. I tell you, yep, seeing that was, they were dancing, they were shouting, man, I was just and the song means so much. The enemy comes and he steals our our joy. He steals our peace. We went back to the enemy's camp and we stole back what he took from us. That last day was one of incredible peace. People shared their testimony. They opened up. They said things that they would never air with anyone before. And it just demonstrated how they laid it down. They were planning to pick it up again. In that prayer time, I realized that I was led to be baptized. It had been so long since I'd been baptized, and you know, it's one of those things that you did when you were younger. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. And so I got led, like, you need to be baptized again. And I began to regular one-day fast that I was led to do. And uh, there's something really refreshing about that. And even though I was fasting, I want to do it more in the future because the spiritual nourishment that I got was more than anything that I saw. And humbling myself by fasting and worship is amazing. I was going to be playing a song later, special, and when I was practicing that, I was going to move myself with worshiping. It was, camp was an amazing experience, and just brought me closer to God, helped me realize the plans that he has for all of us. So I will be playing a song that we did at camp, and I'd heard it before, but it just had some kind of special meaning. 
And normally I don't like to do things alone. I love to worship, but to like play piano and sing, that's just that's just crazy. But I hope that we can just realize that you don't have to sound really good to worship. That some of the best worship comes out of when the instruments stop working, they did. We just sang it out. I started beating on the, uh, what was it? I had like a drum thing. It was weird. But the attitude of worship isn't about sounding good. Thank you. 
Lord, show us your love in ways that we never have. Lead us out of the darkness into the light that we can see. Put the light into our path. Let us realize where we stumble so that we can avoid them and not fall back into our own darkness. We can break the chains that we put down. If we have chains still on us, that we can lay them down at your cross. That is what you died for. For all the pain that you went through, you did it realizing it was all for us. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. Lead us. I don't know who's up, so. <laughs> and so she does. Um, my cabin leader, Laura. Um, so uh, she gave us these um, dog tag necklaces, and mine has Second Corinthians five seven on it. So we walk by faith, not by sight. And so she gave us these because um, I think it was like Wednesday or no, not Wednesday, Thursday maybe. Um, we had to split. Uh, from our normal group, because uh, after tra morning chapel, we would go to certain uh, places. Uh, I went with Hanson to learn about the Holy Spirit. We mostly talked about First Corinthians chapter fourteen, very good chapter. And um, so Thursday we switched. Chris and the boys went to the fire pit, and we the girls stayed in chapel. And there was this lady named Brenda. And she talked to, to us about love. Uh, there are three types of love. Uh, agape, which is godly love. Uh, philo, or philo, uh, which is friendly love. And eros, which is romantic love. And so, her, so um, she made a covenant that... Uh, we would uh, stay here and keep ourselves for our future husbands. So these dog tags are to give to our husbands on our wedding night to tell him we saved ourselves for you and, um, so that we can walk with God together. And I don't know. I just really like this necklace, and I've been wearing it ever since. Yeah. But I really like the Holy Spirit talk that we had with Hanson um, because uh, if I brought my journal, I would have read some verses, but um, we, we stayed in 1 Corinthians 14 um, where it talks about, uh, um, I think, I don't exactly remember. But uh, we were talking about the seven gifts and this, uh, a lady named Miss Jenny. She said that I had the gift of faith uh, because I told her about um, Paul, Paul and how doctors told him uh, he wouldn't walk again, and he did walk. And uh, and so she's like, you come from a family of great faith. And so and I can see great things in your future. And so, yeah, no, she was really sweet, and everyone was really sweet. And yeah. Okay. Amen. Isn't it good to see what God is doing in these young people? Amen. You know, uh, this camp here, it's not the biggest camp. It doesn't have all the bells and the whistles that a lot of camps do. Self-proclaimed budget camp. Is that what you said? Because 
they do. I mean, it has to be done on a budget because they keep it low for the campers. It was sixty dollars, sixty sixty five, for the seniors to be able to go to camp. But the spirit resounding in there is more important than all the bells and all the whistles. It's more important than anything else. You just hear their hearts and what they got out of it. I don't know about you. I could notice a difference in when Chris spoke this morning. There's an anointing there that took place. And to hear Haley talk about, you know, um, there's not a lot of youth being pure today. And to hear her talk about that and receive that, that's so important. It's such a, a good, godly thing to receive. Amen. And there's things we teach here. There's things they learn in church. There's things they learn in youth. But there's something about being in that closed-off atmosphere. They didn't have their phones for a week. I was rejoicing over that myself. Amen. Because sometimes it's just good to cut off because then you can receive more. Amen. You're not worried about what that next text, what that next thing is, is coming in, answering it, and all these different things. And I'm sure they probably had like five, 6,000 messages when they got out of camp. I'm not sure how many. But I can see that God has done something in there. And it's something powerful. It's something, um, I know last year when they went, it was powerful. They received some things. But I am so thankful for what God did in them and is doing through them. And, and we're just going to continue to pray over them, pray over our other youth as well. Amen. And if you ever lack something to pray over, which I'm not sure you do, but if you ever lack something to pray over, pray over our youth. Amen? It's a different world growing up for them than it even was for us. And there's a lot more temptation. There's a lot more distraction. There's The enemy knows the time is short, and he wants to draw them in as much as he can and as quickly as he can. And, uh, and so can pray over our youth. It's so important. And even our young ones. Amen? Amen. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. And depressed and suicidal. Can you imagine? And I know Sydney sees that a lot in what she does. She's talked to us before about that. That it's heart-wrenching to think that children that young have such pressure. And they're going through such things today. And to think that they're can even consider thoughts like that at that age. And part of that is our our society and what's put out there on TV, what's put out there on shows, what's put out there on the phones and the apps and the different things. But God did something in their life. A fourth grader. I think it was $45, $50. Best money ever spent. To change a life. To change a direction. To change a path. You know, one of the things I wanted to pray over, uh, Chris and Haley, this week, as soon as I knew they were going, I said, Lord, show them the path to their future knowing that they're seniors this year and going out into the world and having decisions to make, show them the path to their future. And so Chris came back and we were talking something, we were talking to somebody and, and somebody asked what college he was going to and this was the first hint that I got something changed. And pastor said, well, he's considering, you know, being an engineer and Chris turned around to me and he's like, that's changed now. <laughs> And it just ministered to my heart because I knew God had answered my prayer. My prayer wasn't for him to become a pastor. My prayer wasn't for him to, to do what we do. Sometimes I feel like I want to pray against that. <laughs> it's a tough road. But if God calls you to it, he'll walk with you. Amen? So I wasn't praying him for, for that. But I was praying for God to lead him and guide him into his future and what he has for him. Because we can come up with our own ideas, our own plans, our own way of doing and, and being. But God has a different plan. And I'm going to tell you, most of them don't, most of our plans don't align with his on their own. 
There's very few that do because we walk our own way. And this world is walking a totally different way. Amen. And so I'm thankful for what God is doing in them and where he's leading them and directing them. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're going to cut off there. And were you blessed by that this morning? I don't feel like you could have got anything better today. Honestly, I really don't. I mean, Pastor's a blessing. He's, uh, we always appreciate the word he brings, but I just don't think we could have got anything better than what we got today. I might be a little biased. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, I, I received from that. Amen? I can't go into detail, but we just had a really overwhelming week. And Chris came back, and he was talking about verse about going through the waters and through the river and not be overwhelmed and I thought I needed that I needed to hear that because it's easy to get overwhelmed it's easy to feel like the waves are coming over amen but God is faithful He's always, always, always faithful. Everybody say always. He's always faithful. Amen. So let's just pray and thank God that he's faithful and that he's with us and going out into this world and knowing that. Well, we don't know anything else. Well, we don't understand it all. God is faithful. And we can know that. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the word and testimonies that were brought forth by these young people, these hearts and lives and minds you've changed, Lord. And Father, we pray over Chris and Haley, but we pray over every single uh, child, every single youth that was at this camp. We pray over everybody, every counselor, every teacher, every person, every speaker, everyone who was involved. Father, we thank you for continuing to minister to them. Lord, I ask that you bless those leaders with abundant strength. Father, that's not easy to go through those, those that much time of being there, but Lord, be with them. Bless them. Honor them for their time, for their gift that they, that they gave. And Father, for all that they had to release and all they had to decide and all they had to do, Father, just give them peace. Give them strength, Lord. And Father, I thank you so much for all that you're going to do in each and every one of this, these youth. Let it not end because camp is over. But Father, let it continue to anoint them. Let it continue to encourage them. Let it continue to give them peace. Let it lead them further and closer to you, Father. Further from sin and closer to you, Lord. Further from the world and closer to you. And Father, we just give you praise for this. We thank you for working in these lives. And we thank you for all that you're going to do and all that you're going to continue to do. And Father, we pray over Haley. We pray over Chris. That you are laying and setting down their future. That you're securing a secure foundation as they look to you and trust in you. And Lord, as, they, as they're guided by you. And Lord, we give you praise for this and all that you're going to do. We ask that you protect them heart, soul, mind, body, Father, every, in every aspect that you protect them and watch over them and keep them. And we give you praise and glory and honor for all of these things. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.